Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Michelle Petticola. Welcome to Share Your Brilliance Trainings. So this is my Monday morning training for you guys, especially for you, and I want to talk today about self-worth. As I said, I'm Dr. Michelle Petticola, founder of Secrets of Life and Death and Second Chance Secrets. Helping motivational speakers to monetize their message and their business by creating high-end transformational programs that really have an impact. So by creating a high-end transformational program, you magnify your impact, you magnify your message, you have a bigger impact, bigger footstep in the world, and also you raise your income. Because you can, get char you can charge more for high-end programs. And what I'm talking about charge more is we're talking about five figures. Now that can feel like a huge challenge. And if you've never charged five figure for a five figure program before, it can seem almost impossible. And what is at the basis of this is your understanding of your self-worth. Self-worth is made up a lot of a lot of different components. First of all, we get a sense of how worthy we, worthy we are from early childhood. When we're growing up, we learn from the way in which our parents treat us and the way in which our parents feel about themselves what our worth is. If our parents don't feel like they're very valuable, they're going to convey that message that, well, we aren't very valuable. Also, they can make you feel, whether intentionally or not, less valuable by the way in which they interact with you. Maybe they're harsh, maybe they're overcritical, maybe you have older siblings, and sometimes you just make this decision yourself. Oh, I don't belong. I must not be very valuable. Other things that can get in the way, this was one of the things that came up for me, was that you are you become committed to your parents. You really love them and you do not want to make them feel bad. And that happened to me. My father, who was an amazing man, never got his, his BA. And he always felt inadequate because he didn't go and finish his college degree. And so when I got my PhD, he actually felt shame. And he conveyed this message to me of don't surpass me or I will feel bad. Now, I don't really believe that he wanted to convey that message to me, but it had an impact. That and, and then I got another whammy from my boss and then my husband left me. All around the same time that I had just finished my PhD was just stepping into my power. So things like that, events like that can have an impact on how you feel about yourself. In addition, there's this cultural influence of how the culture sees, for example, women. You know that today, still, women only make about 70 cents or maybe 80 cents on the dollar of what men make. And that men often are hired over women, that men's voices are often heard more or respected more than women's voices. And it's, it's something that has been supported and reinforced in our culture. Now, of course, women are respected a lot more now than they ever were in the past. I mean, there was a time when women didn't even have the right to vote. They didn't have the right to own property. They were seen as belonging either, either to their fathers or to their husbands. So that has a huge effect on how you feel about yourself. And then what about role models? How many role models do we have that are people that we really, women, that we really can relate to, that we can say, yes, I want to be like her. Well, I kind of felt that way about Marianne Williamson because she was so self-assured and she was stepping up into an arena that was very, is a very, difficult arena. That's the political arena. Arena. She already had established herself in the self-help and the, um, the spiritual realm. 
but now she was stepping into a whole different arena and they really gave her a hard time. They, they tried to diminish her and they tried to um, dismiss her and yet she kept on going. And so I invite you to think about who is it that you resonate with? Who do you hold in high esteem as wanting to be like? So that's one thing, is to have an image or an idea of how you want to be. It's not enough just to say, mm, grit your teeth and I'm going to be powerful. It doesn't work that way. It actually is an inside job. You need to feel that you're worthy. You need to believe that you're worthy. And if you don't, no matter how many times you practice your script, when you come on Facebook Live or come on a webinar, you will have a tendency to stumble over certain words. Like, what do you do? Oh, I empower motivational speakers to monetize their business, to monetize their message by creating high-end programs high-end transformational programs that really make a difference in people's lives. So take that in a moment. What's your message? Go ahead and write it down in the chat. What is it that you offer? And how do you feel? And how many times have you said it? And do you say it with conviction? If you don't work on the inner game, if you don't work on that self-worth, you're going to keep on stumbling. Part of the purpose of creating a high-end program, one that really has an impact, well, there are two reasons. One is that in the process of creating that, especially if you work with me, in the process of creating that, you are going to have to put aside all, that is, let go of all those beliefs about yourself that are holding you back. For example, I was talking to a couple of my clients last week and I asked them to share their wins for the week. It's one of the things we always start out with is what did you do well? And it's amazing. These are high powered women, how they stumble over talking about what it is that they did well. Part of it is training. Oh, we don't brag. We don't, we don't voice how well we're doing. And part of it is that they have gotten into a habit of talking about what's wrong with them. The journey to empowerment and self-worth is to start believing, is to start taking action that demonstrates how you feel about yourself. And yeah, you're going to get it wrong. You're going to mess up until you start taking that action. So developing a high-end program is part of taking that action, of feeling, yes, this is what I'm good at, this is what I believe in, this is how I am showing up in the world. And that makes a difference in the world, that makes a difference inside. And as you start to change inside, your voice outside starts to change. And one of the things that I talk to my speakers, my motivational speakers about, is how to show up authentically. I didn't realize how much I was hiding behind a mask, a persona, when I was speaking. I joined Toastmasters. I learned all the fancy movements and, and expressions and drama, but I was still hiding behind a mask. I was hiding behind my intelligence. I was hiding behind my drama. And still sometimes when I speak on Zoom and I'm away from the camera, somehow the physical distance makes me speak louder than I would rather speak. I want to speak more personally, more close, more face-to-face. -face. That is the challenge, the new challenge of this online media is how to not sound like a used car salesman, how not to sound like a, a performer, how not to sound like canned speaking, but to sound like you are who you really are. So you see, that's also part of self-worth, is you start to love yourself 
is you start to accept who you are right now, right here, and you're good with that, the easier it becomes. But it has to be the internal change first. You cannot force it. If you force it, if you force your expression, then it will come out forced. People will hear it. Even if they don't recognize it, in their bodies, they will feel it. So another thing about self-worth that's really, really important, and that is, who are you surrounding yourself with? This is huge. If your friends are making less than you, or are making the same as you are, and you want to boost yourself, there's this sort of crab in a bucket syndrome that they will pull you back, that maybe they will make snide comments, or they will kind of express shock. Oh my God, you're charging that much? What, are you crazy? So part of your process of growth would be to surround yourself with people that are comfortable charging a higher price, that are comfortable standing in their power so that it becomes more natural for you to do that. That's one of the reasons why you might want to work with a coach, a high-end coach, because it, her energy will boost your energy. It's really true. And I've seen it with my own clients, is that as soon as they started working with me, their income went up. They had more success because the vibration that I'm putting out conveys over video. It conveys over our interaction. You don't have to be face to face. Thank goodness, because in this lockdown, shelter in place, we can't see each other face to face. In fact, I, I went to a, a wedding this past weekend. And yes, we wore the masks and we did the social distancing and everything. But it was strange to be with people in the company of people. And there was a little bit of this residue of cautiousness. And is this real? Try it out. Go see some people. I mean, of course, be intelligent about it. But it changes your perception of being with people is really different. Okay, so back to being with people who are high-end. It really does make a difference. When you hear people charging $50,000 and $100,000 for their programs, suddenly charging small five figures does not seem like such a big deal anymore. In fact, it just starts to flow off your tongue with ease. So let's see, what did I say? It's an inside job. You have to work on yourself first. That part of working on yourself is taking action, taking action that pushes you outside your comfort zone. That you want to surround yourself with people who are gonna support you in this endeavor because otherwise, crabs in the bucket, they'll start pulling you back down, grabbing your legs, pulling you back down. So you need to upgrade the people in your community. You may actually need to do some emotional healing too, which is one of the things that I offer in my program, Second Chance Certification. Not only do you develop a high-end program, but in the process you work on your own issues as you discover exactly what your gifts are and clarify them and structure them so that other people can utilize your genius so that they can also improve. And in that process, you go through a transformation. Well, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. That's what having your own business is about, is stepping into your power, is developing and growing. And guess what? It doesn't ever stop. It's an endless game of evolution. I shouldn't say game, an endless journey of evolution. And that's good because you don't want to get stuck. You don't want to get stale. You want to always be excited and learning and growing. And that's what's wonderful about being a coach, about being a healer, about being a change maker, is that you, you're, you're living in this, in this state of 
creativity and excitement and fluidity so that you're always evolving. In fact, that's what we always want to be, is always evolving, making a difference for ourselves and for others. That's when you know that you're really alive. That's all I have to share today. Check in on your self-worth. If you want to have a conversation with me, check out my website, Second Chance Secrets. Take a look at the high-end offer, the Second Chance Certification, and if and when you're ready, book a call with me and let's have a conversation. You have an awesome Monday here in San Francisco. It is gorgeous. We didn't even have any fog this morning. It was just beautiful sun shine from the from the get-go and the air is clear. I am so grateful. I hope your day is going out is starting out great. Have a fabulous week. Be brilliant and bye.